Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Dove Dog and I are going to see if we can get a 1981 Chevrolet C30 service truck back on the road. She's a custom deluxe model, two-wheel drive, 350, four-speed. Been parked since 2006, so 16 years she's been off the road. It was an old MDU truck. You can see the orange paint coming through there, and that's the spotlight where that come from. A little whiskey dent in that front fender from the hired man, I guess. 16-inch tires in the front, a redding toolbox that just cleaned out. She's sunk in pretty good. And there's no air in that tire. That's a nice tow bumper. Post hole digger. Oh, we got a vice. Dang. Dang. Let's get this thing loaded up. Get her back home. Let's see what we can do with it. What is that? This ramp back here. That's for your ladder. That's a small block Chevy. It'll take right off, right? Hopefully. Tried getting that open. It don't open. Hopefully it don't open on the way home. On its own. That would be no bueno. Oh, look at that overspray. Nice. All right, let's see if we can't get a square body loaded. Look at them. BR Chevrolet Ghost Shave. What'd you find? I don't know about you, but I got me a freaking can koozie. Help me to Buckets Pub and Pizza in New Rockford, North Dakota. Nothing. Buckets, I think that was what, he, I think that's what this guy owned. God dang, he probably did. You'll have to show that to him. He'd be like, oh, I got a bunch of them. I, I don't think our pump up job uh, <laughs> lasted very long. Only took you four tries, nice work. Good thing his chin cut out the other three times so nobody else even knows on the interweb. Who wants to, somebody's got to steer, somebody's got to direct, somebody's got to hold the camera. So much going on. You're doing real good. Look at that concentration. Yeah, that's where it's cool. Watch him. Yeah, square up the square. Go! Oh! 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 No brakes. That's what a clutch and a manual's for. Am I good enough? Yep. Come ahead. Okay, hold on a second. Let me pull the ramps out of there. Well, can you extend? Oh. It's about six inches. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> That'll be good. Just in the top side. We're gonna have to let you go. This isn't working out. <laughs> you clearly don't know how to put air in tires. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Well, we got ours loaded. See you later. Okay. See you at home. What's uh, Pookie got going on over there? Yeah, you tell him, Duff. By sheer coincidence. Oh, Pookie. Oh, he got the sleeves off and everything. He's got his raking machine out there. Oh, man, how many wheels is that? Count them, kids. That's a 10 wheel rake. Son of a biscuit. What's he dragging behind there? Some number nine wire? Look at that fancy shirt. What's that all about? You like popsicles? Uh, picture of your mom. Oh. <laughs> What, what are you doing here? Just tipping this hay over? Yeah, it's tipping her over. We got a little rain yesterday, so the top's a little dry with the bottom, you know, it's kind of like a, it's like a rug, you know, on the grass. It doesn't get dry, so I'm trying to get a little fluffed up, get a little air, get a little stuff from underneath it. Hey, man, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, man? Tomorrow I'll come bail it. <laughs> rugs don't make good bales? Yeah, rugs don't make good bales. Rugs don't dry very good. You know, I pick up your rug and it's a little moldy underneath. You don't want a moldy rug. I don't know where you're getting your rugs at, but. New rugs shouldn't have mold in them. No rugs should. Raking up our hay. Anyway, we made her home last night with the old square body dually. Let's get this thing unloaded. Let's get it in the shop quick. It's hot out. It's not much better in the shop, but it is freaking miserable out here. So let's make this happen. Not only did we burn $200 worth of diesel fuel yesterday, looks like we made a mess of a tire. I think that's one of the newer ones too. Son of a biscuit duff. Well, hopefully we can salvage that thing because they're not giving 235, 80, 16 trailer tires away these days. Maybe it's just low and there's that much weight. I doubt it. It looks uh, beyond low. 
So we'll just add that to the list. Hopefully we just picked up a tire, a, a tire, a nail. No, that one's cracked in the treads. That shouldn't be the new one. I think this is the new one, the Hercules. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. That one's a Carlisle. Yep, that's the uh, oddball. So awesome. It doesn't make me feel any better. Also, we pumped this tire up before we left. Not holding there, but that might have to do with some of the crap in the bead too. Let's get this thing unloaded. And get the flip out of here. Well, we got this son of a biscuit inside. It is low 90s temperature, probably low 90s humidity. It's gross out. Got her next level shirt on. She's a little swampy. The uh, under breast of Cesarea is sweating. Get your Mortski merch. Get your Duff merch down below. I uh, suggest the next level shirts. Get them a size larger than you usually run. You won't. Uh, Regret it. Let's take a look at this 81 C30 service truck now that we got her inside. So give me the title. He got it in 94, I believe. So 13 year old rig. Came from MDU, which is Montana Dakota Utilities. He's got a brother that works there. It was orange, as you can see in here. I guess his hired man whammied up this fender. Wasn't real happy about that. I don't know, he had a buddy paint it for 150 bucks. So you can't expect much for that. Tweak the bumper. I'm guessing in the same accident there, so we need a park light. It's the stripper custom deluxe version, so it doesn't have the four headlights. It's got these uh, knockouts down there you can take out, put the four headlights in. I think you gotta change the core support though. Grills, seen better days, been the star of many plays. I mean, shield looks okay. We, we found some bugs last night with it. Got a couple of busted out chicken chasers up there. Got the old Unity spotlight up top for checking your cows and highline poles. What not? Looks like that chicken chaser's seen better days as well. Most of the tires were holding air. This one I managed to knock off the bead shoving it in here. Also scratched up the new lift pushing it in because Duff wasn't nice enough to steer. Four speed, no AC, AM radio, crack dashboard, orange with blue interior. That must have been hideous. Seats, typical square body, blown out. She's pretty moused out in there. Oh, what else? Pretty solid down here. A little bit of bubbling in the camcorder. Rockers are real good. Yeah, it's a shame about that fender. It'd be a pretty straight rig. Even like the insides of these boxes, no tools in here, unfortunately, but usually the dirt and water and everything sits down there, rusts them out. I don't know, she's in good shape. Yet. It's a Redding box. I believe those are out of Redding, Pennsylvania. I guess I didn't check them all. Looks like we got some steel wool is about all. I think the other side's for a ladder rack. I don't know what was over here. He says it's got super heavy duty leaf springs in it because it had a crane in there at one time. There's a vice in here. Uh, I'm sure that's gonna need some lubing up. Again, it's got redding on the lace tail gate. It's got the new Rockford, North Dakota BR Chevrolet Go Chevy mud flaps. Those are, those are pretty neat, ain't they, Duff? That's pretty neat. I think it's got the hitch that you can slide out and pivot it sideways for Hooking up to stuff by yourself. Big heavy duty son of a gun. We better check all these, make sure there's nothing good in there. Oh, there was a fire extinguisher. We don't start fires around here, so we don't need that. Picked up some tires from KG on the way home. These are 235 70s. They're gonna go on another expedition we got, hopefully. And he also had some more mud flaps. I kind of dig these old mud flaps. This one's from Town and Country Mortars in New Rockford as well. That was the Ford dealer. Neither the uh, Ford dealer or GM dealer are there anymore. Oh, this has got a little bit. Oh, that's where the good stuff's at, apparently. A little different layout on this side. Nothing in there. You got a nice little workbench to work on. I don't see those flying open on us going down the road. It is a dual tank option, you know, for the terrible fuel economy. At least this side stayed up. Oh yeah, we got some, some stuff over here, some hardware duff. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, big hardware. Some little quarter inch carriage bolts, 716 carriage bolts. You know, the stuff we use all the time. 
I don't think we could get this door open. I don't know that we tried real hard. Uh, we didn't try real hard. Comes with the Chinese players. What's this, Hoover Schneef? Muscle, oh yeah, for your musk. Mm, Mr. Musk. What's behind the seat? Oh, there's the rear view mirror. I think we need one for a square body. Oh, that one's all unmirrored or whatever they call it. Dang it. An ice scraper brush combination. And a whole bunch of mouse poopies. Duff's favorite, can't wait to get in there. We're gonna wanna fix this door seal at some point. Really a stripper model, no headliner. I did cut a hole over there for something. I wonder if that was for the wiring for the spotlight. I don't know. Just ram that right through the roof. Funny that didn't cause the roof to rot out. Usually that's bad news. Speaking of bad news, where's the mouse box in here? Oh, not too bad. Document for incomplete vehicle. Oh, they shipped her as a cabin chassis. Anything else good in here? Some 22 shells? Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. Old registrations. The 81 owner's manual. Oh, who bought her new? Montana, Dakota, 1028 of 81, 184 miles at delivery in Glen Owen, North Dakota. I'm betting Glen Owen doesn't have their Chevrolet dealer anymore. 12 gauge shell, low brass, Phillips screwdriver. It's AMSCO, made in the USA. It's a scraper, it's not the super scraper. She's busted. Here's the Montana, Dakota utility maintenance and expense log. How, bad, how far back does this go? That's the purchase date. Here's when all they put all the gas and oil in it. 25 gallons, 35 bucks. 30 gallons, 41 bucks. Man, well, that was all over a buck at least, for a while anyway. Oh, there we go. 30 gallons for 27 bucks. 29 gallons, 25 bucks. Oh. But in 18 gallons of diesel yesterday, 5.30 a gallon. It was 100 bucks for 18 gallons and change. 26 gallons, 30 bucks. Cheap. What else we got in here? Preventative maintenance, when they change the oil, oil filter, lube. Oh man, this stuff, I dig this stuff. All the way up to 88. When was the last time they, they bought gas for this thing? 520 of 88, 31 gallons for $30.50. She was unit 4220. Okay, it is frick, it's so hot, I'm sweating just reading stuff. Some glass fuses, you gotta have a huge collection of those if you work on this garbage. Let's just put all that back in there for the next person. Did they have protective plates in 1981? I don't feel any in there. Look at that. I'm just sweating, standing here in the shop. That's the other thing is I put these nice fans up here. If you go back on one of my videos, you hear a whoop, whoop, whoop in the uh, microphone. Put three fans, one there, one there, one there. One of them makes a whoop, whoop, whoop. Guess what? It's the one right above the hoist where we always film. Pretty excited about that. So now we can't run the fans when we're filming. Unless you guys want to hear that, and you don't want to hear that. Let's get this thing up in the air. You know how much I hate flat tires, so now that's two of them today. Plus there's two flat on this side, and probably one on the other side. So let's get those sealed up. And the good news about that is, I can do that and fast forward. So I can turn the fans on, because you guys aren't going to have any sound. So, I'm going to fix some tires. Try anyway, make this thing roll around. Then we got to fix the one on the trailer. First it's the pickup, then it's the trailer. And it's to pick up on the trailer. Look at that. I'm even sweating more profusely just walking around this thing. What are we gonna name this thing? Big White, the Big White Whale. You guys think about it while I work real fast like. If anybody's got a good tip for cooling a big shop like this on a budget, let me know. I need one of them giant box fans. One of them swamp cooler things. That'd be great. Let's do this. You hear that? Don't buy the $160 fan from Menards. Get the big A fans for like eight grand, right? Before we pull that wheel off, let's uh, take a tour of the bottom of this thing, huh, Duff? Got our Cyclops as our guide. The Firestone Steel Texas are 245, 75, 16s, which it's good they're not 16 fives. You got a little. Bit more option for 16 inch tires. These tires are not that good. I was looking at this fender, you know, I think we could probably straighten that. You guys want to see some body action, just like we did on the red 84 three quarter ton four by four? And we could pop that fender off and beat the crap out of it. But we're going to do it late at night or early in the mornings. I ain't doing it in this swampy freaking weather. Yeah, I just watched my video for last week. And I, 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 I apologize for being in a bad mood the whole time. 
I try to be happy at least at some point during this video, maybe. Well, I wonder what color this thing was originally, because I'm betting there's a lot of orange overspray, so it probably wasn't orange originally. We'll have to see what we can find. Does it have power steering? Oh, it, it's got Hydro Boost brakes. We did open the hood, sorry. Look at that, still got paint on the bottom of the cross member, I think. She's a greasy mess, the small block, I presume a 350. It's missing the inspection cover on the clutch. It's a manual clutch, so that's good. Single exhaust, no glass pack. I'm betting at least one of these tanks is rusted out. There's the uh, flipper valve from side to side. I'm sure that's stuck on whatever side. Looks like somebody nichied that cross member out for running electrical or whatever's inside of that. Did a real nice job with it though. Doesn't have a glass pack, but that muffler is foobard. Little uh, number nine wire holding it on. Quick Dick McDick would be proud. This is Quick Dick McDick reminding you a man will never get tired of pulling on his number nine wire. There's another bracket that was torched off for some reason, unknown. And then we got the good old triple clamp going back here. You never want a triple clamp, a double clamp. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. You can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lord. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. We got the whole plethora. We got a tarp strap with two hooks holding what appears to be the fuel filler neck. What is that? Oh, we got them on this side too. What? Oh, that's, that's like the torsion bar. Look at that huge torsion bar they got. Leveling bar? I don't know what they call that. They like low riders, they cut the bump stops. Took the bump stop completely off and then nichied out the bracket as well. a boy. You know those ginormous shocks. And that ginormous rear end. What a large rear end you have. What's that, like a Dana 70, corporate 80 or something? I don't know. Big stuff, we don't know nothing about it. I don't know if somebody tried putting a hitch up there or what, but they were not very good torch operators. It was like Ray Charles trying to cut that son of a biscuit out of there. But he wasn't lying. It's got the whatever torsion bar, leveling bar thing up there. And she has got a fat stack of leaves. Son of a gun. What's this? Is this a line lock to the rear brakes for all the burnouts? Oh, I don't know what that's there for. Clearly it's not wired up anymore, but we can figure it out. Is that like a park lock, park lock, a micro, micro brake? Is that what that is? Oh yeah, they're Monroe Magnums. Again, paint all over the diff yet? And it's not even neon, like I despise. <sighs> Tailpipe's missing. Ooh, scotch clips. Yay. I don't think this was one of those sliding hitches. Oh, maybe it is. It latches in. I'm guessing that's the lever. You can see how it's had the crap beat out of it. Maybe we'll have to beat on that a bit. Figure out how that works. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this style. We shall, we shall find out. We might have to do some searching on the internet. I'm guessing it's spring loaded that way. So you smash her back this way. I don't know. We're gonna, we gonna find out though. Oh, and then you take this pin out. Well, now we need to know. We need to know what this hitch does. Oh man, hopefully that sign up there didn't get too close to the top of the hoist. Oh, we're good, we're golden. And then, and then what? I guess that's gonna keep it from going that way. Let's hit on this latch on the other side, you know? So, oh, and then we lock this side out. Yeah. Well, that's where it stops. Look at that, though. You can move it out, and then you swing it kind of left and right just a little bit. You don't get a ton of movement. That's pretty cool. Old well, Buckets, he said that was like a $500 hitch back in the day. You can see that bolt right there is what's stopping it. But the whole thing is only bolted on there in these two spots. So, I mean, it's, it's not like it's tied to the frame or anything. Although this is a pretty robust aftermarket bumper. Is it a Laverne? Yep, Laverne. Truck equipment company, Brandon, South Dakota. She's a 10 inch drop model. She's a V5 rating. Max gross weight 10,000 pounds, max tongue weight 1,000. So we're gonna spray some luby dube on that thing. I always kind of wondered how these things 
Well, I've never seen one like this. I've seen other ones that work in other ways, but this would be pretty cool. We'll lube her up, knock her back together, and move on to the tire, hopefully. I guess I forgot to tell you, so then once you get it hooked up, you just drove ahead and got rolling and hit the brakes, everything kind of slammed back together and was supposed to latch. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You're like, why did I think of that? Tell me about the hitch like this that you had, or your grandpappy had, or your uncle had, or your daddy had. Okay. Guessing you gotta keep them moved up though. She's latched. Just kidding, not latched. Oh, and this has got the infamous uniball. You can knock this pin out and put anything from inch and seven eighths to two and five sixteenths on this. Same shank, same deal as receiver hitches. If you don't use them very often, they get rusty and then they don't want to come apart. And then you're SOL. And then you gotta buy a new ball. Okay, tired time. I'm real tired. One man hitch jobs, the more you know. Also, make sure to double nut them because, you know, make it really look obnoxious. You know what's supposed We can just clean the crap out of there and pump them up. Huh? What the shot? Ow. You know, everything looks pretty good. Let's put a little bead sealer on there. Like blackjack for your bead. Blackjack's for your roof. Not, not that blackjack. It's like the seal. Flex seal for the rest of you. We'll get this casing seated on there. Just for those of you that don't like them called casing, we're gonna give a shout out. Well, sleeper dude, that crazy son of a gun, he's, he's trying to do this YouTube full time. Go check him and Rocky and Ralphie out and the rest of the fam. Go wish him luck. Tell him words he sent you. They're a good, good group of kids over there. Even though they do call tires casings. Teach their own. You want to get this stuff like anti-sneeze. You want to get it everywhere. See if she takes. There we go. Oh, put your face right in front of that bead. Hopefully it was just grass in between the bead of the tire and the bead of the rim. Causing her to leak down. Pretty right about now the air compressor usually likes to kick in. It's loud as well. Anybody got a good way to quiet those down? We can't really move it outside because the uh, inclement weather that we have. I was thinking about building like a halfway cage around. You can't seal it in too good because then uh, it'll overheat and such. You don't want that. Okay. I hear it leaking. Coming on our sidewall. Amongst other places as well. So that's pretty awesome. Now we gotta take this one off. Let's see what we can finger out on the inside one. I don't know that we tried putting air in this one, but looks like she's been down a while. She pulled back up, so at least it's still on the bead. That's a plus. These are just their standard rim, 16 inch rim with a safety bead in it. No split rim to worry about blasting off in my face and ruining up all this prettiness and knocking my teeth out. That being said, I am going to check the tire pressure on this. I'm guessing they're good for like 80. With age and wear and tear, we're just going to go like 35. 38. We're going to quit there. Hopefully that stays up. Tech tip of the day, you can take your inside duel, flip it around the other way, 
and you can have training wheels and you don't have the inside dual anymore. It's, it still identifies as a dual. It's just the outside dual instead of the inside dual. Do you get what I'm saying? You see how they're stamped or they're concave and you flip it the other way and it sticks out? It's, these are the same wheels. You can swap them around. But, you know, if you really want to be cheap and not run four rear tires and have your dually, you can flip it out to training wheels. Just run two. Okay. I'm done talking. Another acceptable use of flexi hose, but that's really not flexi hose. It's just fuel filler hose. There's a little rot in that cross member. I noticed that when I was lifting up, this rocker's real good. A little bit of rot in the bottom of the door, barely bubbling, and then the uh, bottom of the cab corner as well. Yeah, you can see it's, it was definitely painted orange at one time, not from the factory. But this cab corner looks real good. Bottom of the door looks even better. But I noticed this line coming out of the service body. Where does that go? That's the speedo cable. That ain't what we want. Where did that thing go? Oh, there it is. Sneaks up the inner fender. I'll have to check that out when we're up there. Inquiring minds must know. Oh well, man, these bodies were built robust. Oh, there's a little rot in that cross member too. But look at all that iron in these redding bodies. I think these are, a lot of guys say these are the number one body manufacturer. There's a best bang for your buck anyhow. And I have to agree, these things are built like freaking tanks. I tell you what, it is a great day to mount tires, said nobody ever. Well, we did get a tube in it though. It's a tube for like a 616 early Ford wheel, basically an early, smaller, narrower wheel and tire, but she's in there. And uh, I guess I've never seen a ovular uh, valve stem hole, but what do I know? Nothing. But this way it'll stay up because you want to keep your training wheels pumped up. Let's get that whammy back on there. And then while we got her up, we should go and snip that fuel line so we don't suck up any 1995 petrol while we're at it. And go from there. Oh, sweet fuel master. Let's see, got the gauge on there. She's pegged it F. That's a Uniroyal Laredo. And this is a Uniroyal Laredo. These two do not match. That looks like a good year. What's this? And that is a no namer. It's radial belted. So, yeah, we got, looks like th at least three different tires on here. Those two might match. And then we got a white letter, Firestone on that side, and a non white letter on this side. So we got one white letter out of six wheels. That's better than five. It's pretty much better. The only thing better than that is none. I just noticed this when I was about to pick her up. That's a, that's a big chunk of tire missing right there. You can see some cords in there. No big deal. We got one more on this side to hold it up. Oh yeah. It's a deep burn. Oh, oh it's a deep burn. Oh, it's so deep. Anybody know what these safety ring fingers are on these one tons? If you know, comment down below. Hey, I'm like that pudding fella that rhymed it. Wow. Feels so special. He's a special character. I wonder if that's why he's got all them tattoos. I wonder if that's why he's special, all that ink. Got to his head, maybe. Who knows? He ate a lot of crayons as a kid. You do not want to line the valve stems up. I stated it in another ramp truck video, I think. You want to line them up. You most definitely do not want to line them up because then you can't access the one on the inside. So luckily, they're 90 degrees off here, which I think is what you want. Maybe, wait a minute. Somebody said it's even legal in Canada to line them up. You guys have some weird rules in Kanakistan. <clears throat> so I got to drinking, I mean got to thinking, now, let's see what ratio this diff is. See if there's a tag on the diffy. We got her in the air. The old Joe Diffy. Oh, nope, that ain't the tag. No tag. Somebody's had her off before. Oh yeah, clear silicone. That's the dead giveaway that she's been opened up. I'm guessing it's 410s, but could be like 373s, rarely. Maybe 456s, maybe even 488s, but she's probably 410s, I would guess. Pinion seal looks dry. Axle seals and brakes look dry yet. I wonder if those work. U joints look dry, tight. Not a bunch of rust peeking out of them. I think this is a 420. 
SM420, maybe it's a 465. I don't know. I don't know these things. I don't know anything, to be honest. I know there's a lot of grass up here. That seems like a wire. Probably shouldn't pull on that. It's a four speed. And it's got a PTO cover thing around there, you know, for putting a winch on it and such. Because everyone wants to winch their two wheel drives. I'm sure that starter's just fine. Aren't you, pal? Be good. Here's what we gotta get at. Well, that's the air cleaner hose. We don't want that anymore. Ugh, get that out of the way. And that weed. We're gonna take these. We're gonna take, what is this? Is that the negative cable? Oh man, that's a lot of grease. She's well lubricated. We are gonna take this feed line, which is three ace, and this return line, which is quarter inch. We're gonna plug the return so that when we hook fuel up to the three ace, it doesn't pump back into the tank. And we're gonna unhook the three ace so that we don't suck up any nasty George first Bush era fuel. I don't know, is that who was the president then? Or was it, well, Billy Clinton? I don't know my presidents. I don't know my states. I don't know my cars. I know nothing. Okay, let's get those lines off. Hopefully it doesn't stink too bad. What are the odds fuel comes out of there? Hopefully not good. Oh, oh it actually looked clearish. Well, that ain't so bad. We can maybe work with that. Still got the original GM writing on that thing? Probably. You know what I hate about constant tension clamps? The fact that people always gotta orient them. So you can't get at the sons of biscuits. And I don't really want to cut her off with the death wheels, means all that gas may be flammable. And you don't want to light fuel lines on fire, because that's what that character down in Oklahoma he does. In all his wisdom. Okay. Son of a biscuit. I'm supposed to slide right off. Yeah, definitely not. Maybe. Oh yeah. Come to daddy. Oh. Whew. Got her. That even looks like factory preformed. I suppose we're gonna slide this quarter inch off. Ah, let's give her a whirl. That doesn't seem to be very good for the fuel up the neck. There we go. Factory fuel tank deletes. I'm gonna sneak this little stubby guy on here. Well, it's long enough so that we can hook it up to the return once we get her figured out. But then we're gonna hook up our boat tank to the other side and good to go. Duff had an Tiffany. He was talking to her. Yeah, they come in all forms. He said that she told him, hook a line up to the tank, hook our pump up, pump it out, and see what kind of stuff we got. It might not be too bad in there. Who knows? Or we might just put some $5 fuel into a really crappy tank and ruin that fuel as well. But let's see what comes out of there. Let's see if we can get anything to come out of there. There was a little bit in the line, so who knows? We got our Hot Wheels battery over here. Hot Wheels is our battery sponsor this week. No, not actual Hot Wheels. I think his name is Wheels. I need a plug for that. I'm three ace bull sitting here. Seven sixteenths is gonna have to work. If you wanna be the battery sponsor, send us an email. Morski Repair at gmail.com. We'll cut her line off. Head's probably in the way of the camera. Look that up. And what's a pumpy pump? I don't know about this battery, I know it's arcing next to this fuel tank. It's got fuel all over it. Yeah, let's, let's move that. We don't want any match in the gas tank. Boom, boom. Match in the gas tank. Boom, boom. Is this pump gonna work? Let's try him. Did we get another bad pump? We might need a fuel pump sponsor. Gonna hook up the right way. I guess we'll go find another pump. It's getting hot. If we hook it up backwards. We don't have a bad battery, do we, Hot Wheels? 
battery checks out. Awesome. Another bad fuel pump. Well, we found our only other fuel pump we could find. Let's see if this one will work. We have to get some more from the old Amazonia. One eternity later. Not having any luck there. Let's go a little further up the line. So this is what I would call the diverter valve. So this is where the right tank and the left tank meet up. Let's go up to the uh, front of the rig. Let's see if we can pull some fuel here. Now we're bypassing that, so it should just be pulling out of the driver's side tank. Let's see what we got. Give her a little air to prime the tank. Now it's just gravity blasting out of there. That's all right. Doesn't look terrible. Doesn't stink anything fierce. Wonder how much a little container holds, because I think these are like 18 gallon tanks. So if that thing was full, there's gonna be a lot of petrol in here shortly. Definitely don't want to match in the gas tank boom boom this thing. See what happens. I'm gonna move this battery out of the way. Oh yeah. Real short lived. We'll try the other side. I think we'll just use the air deal on that one as well. Let's blast a little air in the passenger side, see what happens. Maybe we can blast air this way. Let's see if we push fuel out. Maybe not. Maybe it's empty. We're just gonna leave all these tanks and everything unhooked up here. And we're just gonna run a boat tank up front for now, but at least we know that that tank's mostly empty. That's the other thing, you can't really bang on these tanks because they got this, oh, that is the tank. Usually they got these shields on them. And that's where they rust out because all the dirt sits behind them. But that does sound empty. Same there, you can hear a little trickling around. It's really a crapshoot on these tanks if they're actually gonna work for you. I don't know if it's better to have a tank that's full or empty. I like full tanks because then there's no room for moisture because moisture is what causes the rust in there. But you gotta worry about the uh, varnishy gas. But usually that doesn't get too bad. This gas actually looked. Really good. I'm sure everybody's gonna be like, that's when gas was good. Okay, it's still 27 year old gas. So like I said, we're just gonna leave this discombobulated up here and we're gonna go up there and we're gonna run it off our nurse tank. Use the electric fuel pump and such. And then I think we'll come back here and we'll just bypass all this and run it off one tank when we get to that point. And then later on down the road, if we really wanna address it, we can Hook this back up and figure out if it's working. Uh, there's a switch in the dash, that can go bad. There's the wiring between the two. And then there's this, usually it's this diverter that goes bad. Usually, to be honest, it's the tanks that go bad, they rust out. So, I don't know, I guess we can ask the uh, previous owner if he was using both tanks, but judging by the fuel that was in the other side, I'm gonna say driver's tank. That's the one that fill up. Who, GM, why did they put tanks on either side of the vehicle? What a dumb idea, so you gotta swing around the pumps Fill up both sides. With Ford, at least they had it on one side. Ford got something right for once. Did Mopar ever have dual tanks? They probably had it figured out they had minimal fuel consumption or something. All right, let's address this fuel issue. We gotta open the hood yet for you kids. Let's see what's underneath there. What do you say, you wanna open the hood for them? All right, oh, you gotta go inside to do it? You're a good kid. Oh yeah, you know what's up, don't you, Duff? So, Another thing about 81s and 82s, they're the only years that have 
the blinkers in the fenders, I believe. And then they were the first years of the, I don't know what they call these, torsional hood springs as opposed to the linear ones. And the linear ones, you know, like a big long garage door spring. Those are what caused the old square body kink. And then these hoods, oh, look at this. Probably upset somebody there. Oh, cripes. There's a surprise inside of that one. Some Hoover Schneef duff. So where was I at? These hoods are a lot flatter at the front. The 73 to 79s and 80s are, you know, about three times as tall, maybe four times as tall. And then these have the hood hinges that are, whatever, pretty minuscule, but they don't cause the old square body cowl induction hood buckle. So what do you got going on under here? Small block, manifolds, no headers. Oh, it's got the smog pipes on here. Like I said, it's got hydro boost. So you gotta have power steering to have hydro boost. I've never seen power steering without hydro boost. Or I've never seen hydro boost without power steering. You know, you gotta have a power steering pump anyway, so you might as well get them both. I'm guessing we've got a quadra bog under here. Oh, it looks like we even got our sweet smog pump down there, you know, for all the horsepower robbing. What a silly idea that was. Pump more air into the exhaust to pass emissions. Okay, whatever you say, mother government. Come on now. Sorry, Greta, that was a real great idea, the smog bump. How dare you! Let's get this out of here. How many vacuum lines we gotta unhook? Five or nine. Oh my goodness, they just keep coming. Per the air cleaner, she's the 113 family of 5.7 displacement liters and was built in June of 81. Ooh. A little mouse house in there. You, know, you can tell when they, well, there went the wing nut. When they backfire, that little doodad is melted off. So it hasn't had much backfire and that's good. And if they got a bunch of blow by, this thing's all oily, which don't look too bad. Let's take a look at the odometer. 93,005.4 miles, so 93K on her. Oh, no factory tack. It does have a sweet little cubby hole over there to Store your Vantage Menthols or your Doral's or your Luckies or your Cools or whatever it is that you rip for darts. Oh man, that's seven years bad luck. No flexi hose on the top. Ooh, it's got red Goodyear heater core hoses though. No flexi hose on the bottom. Is she a hybrid? Where's the cord at? Oh man, this thing's gotta have a cord. MDU owned it. Who knows? Oh, there it is, right here. Hybrid, just for you, California. And somebody snipped off the ground. I don't know, I'm not an electrician. Somebody's been in here, put some screws in the vacuum lines. Quadrabog HEI, easy peasy. Oh, somebody stole a plug wire. We're gonna need that. Oh, or we just hook it back up. Better yet, there we go. No Mortsky flick required on these. Keys are in it because we had to turn the ignition on to Get the steering wheel to turn. Just hook up already. What is your problem? Go to your home. Don't you know where your home is? Why didn't you just go home? That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me. There you go. Let's double check them all. We're up here. At least the plug wires aren't yellow, blue, or red. Black or gray. Only colors acceptable for plug wires. Look at this little baby, tiny three blade fan and you think of a great big one ton like this even without air conditioning you'd have at least a four or five blade no cruise control like i said no ac he's a stripper model nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with being a stripper let's drop old hot wheels in here oh these batteries sit parallel to the vehicle interesting side post everybody's favorite what is this oh I bet that's what that cord is that ran up the side of the inner fender. They had a little 12 volt pump or 12 volt inverter, something 12 volt in the bed. So, red to black, black to red. You're good as dead, Fred. Uh oh, I see a plug wire chewed off. We're gonna have to address that as well. That right there's a problem. Number six and number eight are chewed off. So, see if we can't slide those out of there. And we'll see if we can round up a couple more plug-em wires. Silly mice. 
Bible's a bad mouse. Dug up some wires. Sometimes getting these expired boots off can be a real chore. Oh, right this time. Come on. Oh, there we go. And since we're at it, you know, we might as well pull a plug or two out and see how they look. You know how much I'm a fan of pulling spark plugs. I am. That recreational spark plug removal. That's for the birds, especially with a small block Chevy. Come on. Just throw a battery in it and go. It's really never a will it run with a small block Chevy. It's just how long it'll take to get it running. You know, some people down in Iowa like to throw points in it right away, but we don't even do that. Where's where's our uh, spark plug wrench, Matt? Oh, right where I left it. If it was a snake, I'd be dead. Looks like some Delco R44s in there, maybe? Probably should have. Oh, I blew the mouse out away from the plug hole. Well, if this is how it's gonna come out, we're just leaving it in. Son of a biscuit. Wowza. Let's try this one. I'm sure it's gonna look just fine. Oh, she's got a, a good wrench crate engine in her. Oh yeah. How do they look? A little sooty. She needs to get out and exercise a bit. AC R45 TS. Well, before I slide that back in, I'm gonna go inside and hit the key and see if it turns over. I'm gonna hit the key. You watch that there three-bladed fan thinger. Look for rotational motions. I'll do the hard part. Out of gear? Is it in gear? I don't think so. Just kidding, it's in gear. Starter Bendix didn't sound real happy, but turns over good enough for the girls we go with. Let's throw that plug back in there. Maybe we'll squirt some oil on even. Just that one cylinder. And put those plug wires on. And where is the dipstick, Jimmy? We didn't even check that. Let's pull these wires off of the manifold for cheese and rice. It's the big red dipstick. That looks like brand new. Oh, she's pretty black, but it's within the operating range, so good enough for us. How about the coolant? Let's check that. You know, they could have put these radiator caps in a better spot. There's no room. I think the bigger radiators actually were in a better spot. I'm about ready to just say it's good enough. There we go. Oh yeah, she's down there a ways. We'll worry about that if it runs. We'll worry about that when it runs, I should say. Okay, spray some Crowell down that hole. Some got in there, trust me. Look at this handy little access hole for the mice to run in between the cabin and the outdoors. That's real handy. Eight's gonna be our short one. Don't worry, little guy. He got just as much responsibility as the others have. Six come way back here. Okay, I'm laying on the manifold. Let's do this. So I was just picking up my tools so we could start getting this thing to start. And you know, I had my 516s laying on the battery like you should, you know, so it arcs across the posts and, and I dropped it and uh, you'll never guess where it went. If you guessed the overflow tank, you'd be correct. You found me. <laughs> you win a beer. But I can't do that again if I tried. Praise the Lord for magnets, or we'd have a. Oh no, we gotta pick it up from the end. Or we'd have a sacrificial overflow tank here. Whew. What's the craziest spot you've ever lost a wrench? Don't say floor drain, because that's uh, pretty common. My cousins stole a bunch of their dad's tools when they were working on a. Ford Pinto, I believe, and he couldn't find all his tools when he's trying to finish his clutch job. And his uh, 
son, my cousin, told him that he'd filled up the fuel tank. Most of his wrenches went down the fuel tank. So, but that was fun to drop the fuel tank via a clutch job and get all your wrenches back. Knowing him, he's 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 something else. He probably just left him in there and bought some new ones. I mean, I'd think about doing it too. Okay, wrench story's over. I think we're about ready to try to fire it up. I don't have a fuel source hooked up, but we'll see if it'll just run off the bowl. Run a little hot sauce down there. Like I said, provided you got power to your HEI distributor. And your module is good, and your cap and rotor are good, and your plugs are good, and you got compression, and your carburetor is doing carburetor things. I mean, there's really no reason it won't run, right? Sure. And the chances of those are, are quite slim. Unless that was the reason they parked it. I think he just got out of farm and he said, the old quarter bog is thirsty. Okay, I'm going to go inside. You guys watch for fires. Slingshot engaged. What did you guys see up here? I backfired through the car, but actually ran pretty good. I got oil pressure inside, ran pretty smooth. I think we uh, hook up a fuel source tomorrow because it's getting late. And I don't like getting too crazy this time of night. I'm gonna unhook the battery before I leave and tomorrow after work, the old nine to five, the ball and chain, I can call whatever I want, right? Well, hook a boat tank up or I'll probably do the boat tank first and get it running good and then Maybe try that fuel tank. Let's try the brakes. Yeah, we have we got brakes. We should probably check this first. Which reservoir? Oh, they're both full. There might be a chance. Oh, that seal is never gonna reseal again though. Just stay there. I bet there's like an 80% chance this thing even has brakes. Oh, frick. Feels good. We need a name for this thing. It's gonna be freaking awesome. That's what we should name it. Freaking awesome. Freaking. Grab our 516s here. Oh man, we should sweep out all these whatever cotton balls that came out of the exhaust. Mojo's gonna be mad when he shows up in the morning. Where's our 516s at? We saved your life right here. This thing might even be worth putting the whole set of plug wires on. Unhook our negative side before we go to bed. Make sure your battery sponsorship, Hot Wheels. You're a good kid. Turn off our Cyclops. You're a good, good wrench too. Who's a good, good wrench? Put this back on before we forget. Uh oh, it's not happy. Oh man, these seals always swell up. Hate their lives. Come on. You just gotta go back together one more time. Or five or nine. Oh. I'm gonna be the pits, the biggest problem with brakes on a vehicle is that the cap will go back on or seal. You can do it! You can do it! You're a good bail clip and you're a good seal and you're a good master cylinder. So much good! I'm trying to be happier this week. It was pretty, pretty somber last week, whatever it was we were going on. Oh, ramp truck. This is kind of like, it's like the ramp truck's nine-year-old younger brother. Nine-year younger brother, whatever. Time for a sandwich. What are we having today? Let's check out the let's check out the sandwich cooler. Oh my gosh. We got some iconic blondes from Rhombus guys. Somebody brought us some Lone Stars. Those are pretty good. Keystone, lattes. Oh, don't make fun of me. These shandies, they're good. Oh, we ain't had a sandwich in a while. We haven't made these things in a year. We got some. We're at Iola, picked up some these hazy pebbles. They they're not good. Those are not mine. These things are pretty freaking delicious though. Mango carts. Yeah, we like those, but you know, cause we like GMs around here so much. We, we like them all. Let's, let's have a celebratory sandwich. We looked at the date on these things, didn't we? Anyway, they're from like June of 
2021. You can't get sandwiches anymore. You can go look online and there's places that'll say they got them, but when you go to try to check out, they ain't got them. You gotta get the light blue cans, the special light. Cause we're special individuals, ain't we Duff? No, we ain't shooting no fireworks off tonight. Probably in a burn ban, even though it did rain. You know how you could tell it rained? Cause our floor is wet. How silly is that? You want a sandwich? Oh, it's good stuff, huh? I'll drink to uh, getting another square body to live. Don't worry, we're far from over. Oh, speaking of good wrenches and good master cylinders, these are the goodest beers. And you are the goodest boy, aren't you, Duffelopagus? Who's a good boy? Yeah. Do you like square bodies? Yeah, me too. Oh, I noticed when I was climbing in and out, we gotta fix a wing window, the old pivot down here. It's no longer pivoting. And I think these are different between certain years. I wanna say like 81 and 82, something with the latches and I don't know. Chin knows all that stuff, he's a square body guy. There's where the factory mirrors would mount. These are the big old dually West Coaster service body mirrors. Yeah, look at all that crud that came out from underneath there, Duff. That was crazy. It was, it was pretty wild times. You weren't here watching. You were busy out sunning yourself outside. There was a lot of mouse house that come out of there. Never mind that Cadillac. Everybody keeps asking about it. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Mmm. 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 That's a good sandwich. Like a woman, gets better with age. We can, uh, we're gonna do some pressure washing. We're gonna do pudding things. This thing is good. All the lichens, like the silver fox taught us about in science class. I don't know, they provide the mitochondria for something in the heliacs and I don't know. Lichens. We lichens the lichens. Oh my goodness, Fival was living in the exhaust too. Yucky. What is that even? Fiberglass? Cotton? Who knows? It doesn't look tasty though, does it though? He's like, sun's going down, breeze is up, grass feels good, don't it pal? That's gonna feel good. Air conditioning and a cold adult beverage. She's a hot bugger today again, huh Duff? Just chilling over there. Ah, uh, Chin and the Mojo just left. Had them help me empty out the bed of this. We had some tires that we picked up for our, another expedition tow pig project, something or other, and then we got the hub bar sign out of here because I figured I'd have some help before I broke that because it looks way too classy for us. So we don't want to screw it up. But yeah, jeez, I don't know where all these lining kugels and mango carts came from. Oh, even a Corona. Weird. Some fancy people. Must have been throwing their trash in here. And then I forgot this thing's got a vice. She's in... Pretty rough shape. She needs some looby doob action, but it's a swiveling and pivoting one and it's got the jaws for the pipe vice. I don't know what they call it, something like that. But it kind of sucks where it's mounted way in there. It should be out here further. Anywho, uh, also while we're at it, we got the test long out. The old schlong rammed her down the throat of the fuel tank, and of course, it's got to go up to about here and then in so. We didn't have any luck fishing it down that rubber tube. It would just wanted to bound up, push back on us because we didn't have any lube on it maybe. But, so we don't know what's going on in the fuel tank. We're just gonna pretend like it's good. This tire's still up though. That's a plus. So let's hook up our tank. See if that works. Try okay, running it some more? I don't know. We could also play with that selector valve, see if that's working. We got things we could do. We got the air hose out to check that selector valve. So I think that's, that's what we're gonna do. Go from there. See if that thing's doing selector valve things. Where's the switch at? Right there. It is set to the left hand, so we're just gonna leave it and pretend like it's still there. And it's gonna stay there. Oh my god. It's just Mojo leaving in the 962 diesel. I know! 6-2 diesels are awesome. Alright, I'm gonna lift this thing up. What is what's the it's the, it's, the, it's the ups man. We don't have more man. We got the ups man. What's he bringing? You can't bite the man in brown. He brings us all our goodies. All right, I'm gonna raise this thing up in the air, and we're gonna check that 
diverter slash selector valve. So like I was saying earlier, here is our, I guess, selector valve. And you got your feed and your turn for the left tank and your feed in return for the right tank, and then they come out to these, going up to the engine. I cut all these ones off, but I didn't cut these yet. So I'm gonna cut these off, and we're gonna put air through there and see if it comes out on this side, just to make sure. And then we're just gonna leave it at that point. And we'll hook up this tank and leave the other tank. Abandon it, or maybe we'll just go past it, but let's see if we can blow through it anyway. Now when we blow on that, it should come out there. I don't even have to feel because I can see the crap flying out. And then this one should do the same, but up here. Good to go. And these should have nothing. Yep. Okay. Set on the left tank, good to go. Just don't touch the switch on the dash. Cause also with the switch on the dash, it toggles between the gauges. You know, if you got, well not the gauge, but the sending unit, your tank on the right and your tank on the left. That's why all these wires are here. So I don't know what this is. It's sending unit over there. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I have never looked at a schematic. We're not gonna, we're gonna take these old lines off and, Call it good. Here's the old bypass. Man, did I cut that to the right length or what? Like I knew what I was doing. And since we got our return bypass, we don't even need to hook that up right now. So we got our boat tank hooked up. We're gonna hook our Hot Wheels battery up. We'll see if this thing will light off and run on our own. Built to run. Look up our fuel pump. Oh, she's running. I don't see any spitting out of the carburetor, so our float shouldn't be stuck. Let's see if our accelerator pump works. Oh yeah. Good to go. So easy, even a caveman could do it. A caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh no, I, not cool. I did. <laughs> you ready to go for a ride or what? Did you just shake your head? All right, we better uh, open the door and let the exhaust out. But this thing's running pretty freaking good, I tell you what. I think we'll try to hook up that fuel tank while we're at it. Instead of trying to find somewhere to tie that boat tank to. Seem like a good idea? Yeah. We just got a skid steer we got to get out of the way. And uh, that thing's it's out of the way. <laughs> I was trying to service rig like that for my bailing setup, you know. I was breaking down that son of a gun, and guy, I was trying to pull some debt wrap, some twine, just boom, and I got to fix that bit around the field. Everybody's best friend, man, richest man in the world. Just like the dang old Jimmy, yo. Maybe a fire extinguisher? Yeah, maybe that. might be a good idea. <laughs> Look at you with Mickey's. What a classy individual there. Did you be a rock star? Be a rock star, wow. Did you figure out that on your own or did you have to Google it? I had to Google it. All right, let's hook up a fuel tank, huh, Duff? Look at that thing just idling away after sitting for 16 years. 306. Don't be awake, fill your tank. Also, can't use these for gasoline, Greta says so. Sorry, Greta. How dare you? Hopefully it picks up fuel from the tank. That'd be great. Oh, I'm new, I don't know what to do. I'm new! I'm new, I don't know what to do! All right, there should be some fuel in the carburetor bowl. So hopefully that's enough to prime the fuel pump. Let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, we gotta blow a little air in the fuel tank. Prime the system. Turn the idle up too. Let that son of a bitch get right where we can't get at it. Ugh, I need to take up golf. Give it a full turn on the 
idle adjustment, so now I'm fired up. It's probably gonna idle a little bit higher, but I'd rather be too high than too low, especially with a manual transmission when you're pushing the clutch in and whatnot. Also, topped off the coolant, so don't have to worry about it overheating when it's 95 degrees out. Barely hot. <laughs> it's a little warm, your uh, mullet's getting curly from all the humidity. It's naturally curled, baby. Speaking of good crops, you should put some fertilizer on that. Yeah, no, if I could grow a mustache, I would. <laughs> I have like 32 hairs here and 18, like. We're gonna give that Idle adjustment, another twist. Seems like it's idling even lower than it was before we cranked on it, so. I turned it the wrong way. Listen, this is my show. <laughs> well, maybe do it right. It's like it's like trucks, you know, like you're the guy that just does everything, then I come in and set everything right. You're like Stacy David. You gotta laugh after everything you say then. No, you're like Stacy David. I'm the like, guy that actually like- You have the mullet there. though. You look really cool carrying an empty margarita glass no, around. If you had any beer around here, like a normal person, I would be okay. Yeah, because we don't have any sandwiches around here. To celebrate this momentous occasion, Fuki got himself a shy dye, light eye beer. How is it? Mm, good. Is it really? Yeah, uh, okay, it's pretty really good. It's not bad. It's from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, I thought it said brewed with cannabis. It's brewed <laughs> and canned. She's uh, really loping like she's got a hog cam in there, so that's great. Duff is ready to go for a rip. Look at that. Fuel gauge is even working. She was at E, now she's up to three eighths of a tank. Oil pressure is at, you know, 15 PSI, not great. Temp gauge is starting to come up. According to the voltmeter, it is not charging, but we ain't worried about that. Let's check it manually. Let's give her the old magnet test. Oh, it's definitely charging. We're good to go. Doesn't it have a bunch of blow by. It's got a bunch of mouse fecal matter melting off the engine, so that's good. Still having some trouble getting this thing to idle down, so I think we're gonna do a little vacuum delete action and whatnot. Ma called, so Pookie's gotta go home. Good seeing ya. Say bye to Pookie as he smashes into the back of my triple axle trailer. That wouldn't be good, huh? Pretty much got it wrapped up. We just unplugged everything. Plug this guy. You don't have to plug these because that's just a, those are just switches. And it's just a bunch of T's and elbows and yada, yada, yada. And then we had to hook up our vacuum advance back here. And I think that's about it. I'm not saying it's going to fix it, but it's got to be better, right? Living the dream. Enjoy fixing that bearing tomorrow, but I don't get to be part of that. Let's give her a whirl, see what happens. I checked with brake cleaner, couldn't find any vacuum leaks, so I think it's just something in the carburetor that's plugged up that's not allowing it to uh, run off the idle circuit, so we gotta have the butterflies open. I don't know. Who would've thought? Carburetor needs to be clean. So we're just gonna keep cranking that screw open, see if we can't get it to run on its own. Otherwise, we just gotta feather it the whole time with our foot to keep it running. Also, not the end of the world. Definitely needs a carb kit. And I don't have one on hand. I guess we could swap a different carb on it, but what fun would that be? Maybe if we just run it, it'll come out of it. Maybe some sea foam, who knows. Should we take her for a rip around the yard? See what comes out of it? Why not? Let's go. Oh, those things shut good. They must still have the plastic on them. Oh yeah, they do. Nice. And that silly white letter. Clutch felt good, power steering felt good, wasn't whining, I didn't even check the fluids, so. Brakes felt good, I didn't really use them. Idled out real slow. All right. Oh, I like this service body, you can actually see all the back. Some of them go up so high over there. Look you can't see. Ready for his gear.
that's what the noise is. That thing rolling around. Ooh! I wonder how many nails we threw around the yard. We should probably pick them up. Whoopsies! We got a new mini beaten stump. She's even treated. We're doing all the body works. High tensile wire, not as good as the old number nine wire, but it works in a pinch. Some barbed wire. Yeah, we got some cleaning to do. I think that's for tomorrow though. I think it's time for a sandwich. Didn't even have to give her no heat, huh? Oh, look at that. You like that PB blaster, huh? That's, well. that's the cat's pajamas. <laughs> what do you call this thing? Squirrel piss? Skunk piss? Skunk piss? That's what Mag used to call her, skunk piss. I think there's a few other, other stuff that probably probably not supposed to call it. Oh, my, my good vice is at the old shop yet. I got a Wilton bullet vice at the old shop. What kind is this thing? I don't know. I can't imagine you get all the elements all the time like that very good for What do you suppose they cut that wall up there for? They ain't cut good enough to be a hitch for sweeping all the crap out when you throw stuff in the bed. Well, let's see how good of a job Mojo did cleaning this. Did you, did you clean inside the cabinets too? No? What a, what a deal. I thought you were supervising stuff. Okay, you missed them lichens right there. Oh, I tell you what, it's hard to find good help these days. Oh, now you're gonna scrape it off with the wrench? We gotta figure out how to get this, this cabinet open too. We gotta do everything around here. Okay. I don't know what's causing that. Now I'm getting fingerprints all over all that nice clean paint. You gonna smack me with that wrench? She cleaned up pretty good, Duff. Through the seat cover. Oh boy, wash the inside even. Oh, he forgot to get the top of the visors though. No uh, slow motion washing here, huh? There's still some, some seat cover stuck to the seat. Oh yeah, got the door jams real good. What a guy. That mojo. Even washed up the seat belts. Now you're gonna go crack a beer, huh? I doubt it. More like a Mountain Dew. Oh yeah, see how clean he got her under here. We gotta inspect his work. Oh yeah. That valve cover's got a little grease on it yet, but he got most of the mouse poo off the intake at least. I saw my vacuum plug that was on top of the carburetor on that fitting right there it came off so we'll have to get a different one there he says it runs pretty good though so i don't know we'll have to see oh boy look at that plug wire that thing that's like a snake skin shedding off we definitely are going to need a number one plug wire my gosh i've never seen one swell up like that Yowza. It's had a lot of oil spilt on it over the years. Brake fluid? Is that what's spilled on it? I don't know. Well, I suppose it could be power steering fluid leaking out of the hydro boost up here. Does that look like she's leaking or what? Oh, yeah. Her hydro boost has got a. Or maybe that's just water from him washing. We'll have to keep an eye on that. If the hydro boost was leaking, our power steering would be low. She's right where she needs to be. Never seen one with a blue dipstick like that. Well, I don't know about his pressure washing skills. He does all right though. There's a whole bunch of poo up here. He got that out. Let's go round up a plug wire. I don't know if the new ones I got, got any straight boots or if they're all 90s. I think they're 90s. See, this engine had four straights on this side, two on that side, and then two boots. So, GM like to do odd stuff where they. Had half straights and half 90s, I always thought that was kind of strange, but it is what it is. No point in decoding this engine, not only because there's an alternator and bracket in the way, but because, well, it's likely a replacement good wrench engine. Uh, judge on the valve covers, and then these come as long blocks, so you can see it's got a blue intake, and then it's got like the blue valve cover hold downs and stuff, because the regular ones didn't have the clamps for the plug wires and all that. So she'd been replaced at one time. I'm gonna grab a plug wire. Maybe that'll help her idle. I doubt it. Oh, 
A little chunk of the boot stuck on there. Let's prevent our new one from going on. That'll get you. I was looking at her jack here. It's got the factory bottle jack. It's also got the factory one ton adapter for them big old dually wheels. What is this? Inline capacitor, resistor for the blower motor? Usually that connector goes right to there, but this is a little jumper wire in there. Weird. Also, things I hate, white zip ties. Sunlight just absolutely destroys these things and they get brittle and break on you. Use the black ones. I mean, I hate white zip ties more than people who don't trim off zip ties. Or people who trim them off razor sharp. More things that we don't like. I wonder what that wire was clipped for. Sure, it has nothing to do with why the volt gauge doesn't work. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Let's put that on there so we don't drop any more wrenches in the overflow tank. Oh, we're missing our gold bow tie emblem. That's pretty common, I think. I don't know why this don't want to sit in there. I mean, I do. It's because it's missing a bolt, right, Duff? She's tweaked a bit, but we'll leave her for now. Chin might look, see if he's got a spare bumper. He used to have a white one on his double D. I told him he had to get rid of it back in the day. Get a chrome one. So I think he's got his old one somewhere and it's straighter than this. Let's see if we can find a wing window too in his stash. I know he's not gonna have a big old truck mirror. This thing's about ready to have kittens on us. There we go. Push her back in there. We don't want seven years of bad luck. You got that open yet? Inquiring minds gotta know. There's gotta be something good in there. I know it. What do you think, Duff? You gonna give it a whirl? got going on this is supposed to go in and out with this but it ain't so we'll have to figure it out Always all right so we're gonna try to figure out why this thing ain't idling very low but we got the quadra bog master here he's gonna tell us all about so I had I had this one plugged in that cap well, exited one, stage left this is all open this is, I think this needs yeah but it ain't. Normally, normally they're hooked around into the bag. But there's nothing that that hooks to though. Normally these ones are right up here, but all this, it's, all this, it's got all this other vacuum line stuff on it though. So I don't know if we can just hook this vacuum line around, or hook that one up here, hook that up here. But see, where's, there's no vacuum going. There's no, there's no vacuum coming from this. It pulls it, and it pulls this back, I think. Oh. And that's kicks your... High idle that's, on. That's, that's what opens your secondaries too, and opens your choke. Well, I guess I should have saved a picture of where all this stuff went. I saved all the connectors, if that helps you. The T's and whatnot. No, probably not. Must have a bunch of extra vacuum line though. Crusty stuff. <laughs> yeah, I got some new stuff. We'll use that. <laughs> so you think if we just go from there to there? Are you start it up, test her out? You sound so positive. Let's pick this up so we don't drop that down the floor drain. Oh, you haven't heard this gem run yet, have you? Oh. Prepare to be amazed. Look at how nice that seat is. That's, that's a nice design. Did you just go to town with the old... Oh yeah. We do, as only Mojo does, and just pressure wash everything. He didn't get the back side of the visors though. Got a nice quick kitchen chip junior. It's even got a magnet on it. Is that what it's called? Kitchen clip junior? <laughs> nice! Gonna have to solder those together to get that light to work again. We'll put it on the list for him. <laughs> Ooh. Do you trust him? Turn her down a little bit. That's still like all the way in. Yeah. 
Well, it ain't so bad. Maybe it was vacuum leaks. Maybe it was that one plug wire. Yeah, probably not. It's probably vacuum leaks. Thanks for the assistance, Jim. It's got a, a hog 305 cam in it. Is that what you were gonna say? Yeah, the thump thump. <laughs> the mother thumper. Mojo's back here overhauling her latch. What a guy. Got her all lubed up. Now he's going to try to show us how to use a rivet gun. You know how to use one of them? You allowed to have a gun? She's going to be good as new. Good as new Duff. Called up Boom Tube. He didn't have a muffler that would be a direct bolt on. He had some that were close, so... Maybe we'll get a muffler on it. Probably not. Oh, we can put those on there, but those are reserved for another project. All right, guess we'll have to figure out what to do next. It'd be really cool if we had a bumper for it. Just slow up in the Camry next time, sorry. You got any extra chicken chasers? No, I'm not cool enough to have those. The lights still, the bulb's still good on this one. Turn them on, see if they work. Oh, all the ones with covers work. Some 194s. Yeah, need some new 194s. How about if you twist the wires together on the spotlight? Turn, turn, twist the handle? No, I think this switch is in the handle, ain't it usually? Don't you have to turn it and then the end comes up? I don't know. Didn't you grow up with cows? You're supposed to know how to run a spotlight. My uncle is really good at killing deer. <laughs> oh, that didn't sound good. Oops. So, yeah, turn it again like that. No, 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 just <laughs> not like a motorcycle. Yeah, left and right. It ain't moving up top. I like it wants to turn when you turn it. I like it. Yeah. Is there a switch over there? Also, there's like a micro brake switch in the rear brakes. It's got a line lock. Oh, good thing this thing probably does. But there's no no wiring going to it anymore. It's 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 in a scotch clip, so you know it's good. Oh, Mojo's got the. He washed the uh, fuse panel real good. <laughs> the fuses are nice and clean. It's hard to get good help these days. At least he's got thumbs. Oh, here's where the switch was, right on the end here. She snapped off. Oh, we're not gonna worry about that. We're not gonna go looking for deer. I do believe the game and fish frowns upon that. I wonder where we can find some chicken chasers, Duff. I haven't saved any in our adventures. The grain truck, where you'll find that muffler. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go look for a green truck. We're just blasting away with that rivet gun, huh? You gonna work when you're done? Might be a little. Bit. Shooting blanks or what? Just about. Just about. Everybody headed out. Shin was here. Mojo was here. No, it's just me and the duffel up. I guess that Mojo. He's a good kid. Pressure washed this thing all up while we were at work. Did the inside, engine bay, all that. You got this service body door latch working for us. He got the vice all luby dubed up. He got the box cleaned out. Just a good guy. He also pressure washed our hub bar sign. Man, that thing looks good. I think we're gonna hang her from Either that rafter or that rafter. Singular, right? But yeah, this thing cleaned up pretty good. Chin and I, we got the windows pretty clean. There's still a bunch of bugs on the outside. So we gotta clean that up yet. Get the air cleaner back on. I think since we already used three eighths of the plug wires, I'm just gonna put the other two plug wires on it quick before we go for a test drive. And then I think we're gonna pull this fender off if we could get some time and straighten that out just to Make it look a little bit better. Maybe we'll even see if we can find some white paint. I hate paint and stuff, but that fender is just terrible. It really irritates me. That seat cover, getting that off. It sure looks good on that side. This side, she's a she's a bit chewy on huh? their duff. But that's aftermarket seat cover just turned to dust. We can't get the Unity spotlight to work. I don't know. It's it's stripped out in here, and we don't have power going to it, so. That's just a bad idea. I think we could use a couple of new door seals. And this door latch, the uh, rubber's kind of chewed up there, so we might have to replace that. Dash pad even, it's cracked up, but it cleaned up okay. Found some spare keys. It ain't very often you find the spare set of keys. 
Yeah, she's uh, she's not too bad. The old girl cleans up pretty good, huh, Duff? Yeah, I know what you want, an R-I-D-E. But let's put some plug wires on it, then we'll go from there. Did you bring me a present? What do you got? Is it gonna break? Nope. And then you got this guy. He's scared. Hiding in the back. <laughs> it's a leftover rain gauge I had sitting in the garage. Oh, you ruined it. I'm a farmer now, so I got a rain gauge, huh? Look at that. Oh, evil, she brought us a rain gauge so we can be real farmers. That was a nice housewarming gift. Yes, you get an inch of rain and it fills up to there and then it flows over and I don't know. You gotta read instructions, so. Hopefully we just never get more than a inch of rain. Oh, you can buy replacement parts even. What a deal. All right, we got the visitors out of here. Let's get back to work here. So I've been fighting this mirror and it keeps wanting to pop out because everybody keeps slamming the door because you got to shut her pretty hard because the condom's worn out. So let's, let's put a new one on there. So all I did was take some half inch PVC, cut it a length, and then put a little slit in there. I'm gonna pop that old one off, put this new one on, and this thing's gonna be good as new. See, that thing's wasted. The hard part is getting this son of a biscuit slit over there. It's kind of a tricky deal. I always do better when nobody's watching. Do my best work in the dark. Whatever that means. There we go. Yahtzee. And if you really wanted to, you could put some tape over that. Now. Okay, it doesn't shut that good, but pretty good. We don't have to worry about that mirror shooting in our face. Well, I think we're about ready to take this thing for a rip ski. Let's see how she does. And that thing's also needs a some TLC. Don't forget her Cyclops, even though it's dead under there. We've been talking about this earlier. Not with you guys, but the other guys are here. This pickup was painted white, and then MDU got it, and they painted it orange. They must have actually pulled the fenders to do it. And then when the previous owner, Buckets, got it, he painted it white. So I wish they would have just, I like white. I wish they would have left it white originally, or at least done a better job when they painted it white this last time. Oh, silly grill. Anywho, let's see how this thing goes. Duff has been chomping at the bit to test it out. All right, load up. Let's see how the old bucket truck does. These things are terrible on fuel, so I hope we got enough. Eighth of a tank, it says. So we burn a quarter of a tank just running in and out of the shop to wash it, clean it and such. What a pig. Maybe we better run her to the old petrol station. Let's go straight for a second here. Push is way at the top of the pedal. I 
feel the uh, flat spots in the tires at all. And the speedo bounces between 60 and 70. The cable could use another looby doo as well. I don't know that that oil pressure gauge is working. She's just hanging out right at 50. It doesn't matter, idle or not. Let's see what it does when you have the key. I think these have electronic oil pressure sensors where the earlier ones are an actual line, mechanical, and also the tip gauge is sitting down at the bottom corner, nice and cool, like I said, that's pretty cool out, and the voltage gauge is reading like nothing, 4 volts, we know that that's working, so no meters are working anyway. Well, we made it to the big city inconspicuously, what do you think about that now? Right front caliper is definitely warm, Duff. Not like boiling fluid warm, but you can't put your hand on the put your hand on the rim. You don't want to put your hand on the caliper of the rotor. We're up to three quarters of a tank for fifty bucks. Let's just call it a good there. Oh yeah, the seat's a little bloated out. Not terrible. 13.6 gallons, 60 US dollars. Starts right up, idle's good. Let's see how far we can make it from home before that wheel locks up. We got the only service truck with no tools in it either. Pookie is out pulling Johnny number three out. He buried the quad track. He said he was real happy about that, so we don't have him to rescue us. So, let's just hope we make it back. Can't find to grind it. It kind of looks like rain. And the wipers on this thing are pretty much dust. Hey, Dollar General's got open interviews daily if you're looking for a gig. Not me. We'll be doing it. You know, I was just talking about how nice out it was. Pressure gauge says we got 30 missies. That's pretty good. We'll take it. Tip gauge is nice and cool. We got 65. That's, that's kind of the sweet spot. That's about all she wants. 
screech brakes when you got a manual though. Shin and I tried the chicken chasers and of course the three with lenses actually work, the two without no. Imagine that. According to the dash, our left blinker works. And our right one does. And I guess in that left front's not working due to my how buggered up the front bumper is. Bugger. That muffler for being as wasted as it is doesn't sound that horrible. I'd still like to see one on it. But maybe a tailpipe that actually sticks out past the mud flap so you're not catching everything on fire when you're driving the tall grass and whatnot. Seems like a good idea. Yeah. Look at this! This is a hill! Believe it or not, we have these in North Dakota. They're kind of like trees. What does Wes say? Good-looking girl hiding behind every one of them. That's about right. Not many trees here. I don't know what he's talking about. I've been to Illinois. Not a lot to see there. Hey, but at least they're not like hot county where you're. six miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. It's all square bodies. They do go down the road. Pretty dang well. We'll give it that. As we bonsai off the tee in the intersection. Think she'll slide her duff? Hang on! Oh. Didn't have enough entry speed. Or we needed a downshift and clutch kick it. We're really needing to rebuild the quadrobog is performing exceptionally well. You just can't beat a quadrobog. I don't care what anybody says. When they work, they are hard to beat. They perform when you get into the four barrels. And if you just keep your foot out of it and run it on the main tube, they get pretty good mileage. Everybody's afraid of them. And uh, all the ones that are out there are 40 plus years old, so they've been pretty blessed and are used up. So it is hard to find a decent ish one anymore. You get them dialed in, they ain't bad. This donut corner there, I don't think we're going to be able to do a donut in this thing in the corner. This is the long wheelbase and all the weight and whatnot. Of course, wait till we get back to the yard. Plus, it's like a badge of honor showing Mojo when he gets to work in the front of Stupid and reckless and then we got this thing performing well. And we're really lucky we'll just like drop the drive shaft right in the middle of said donut. And we're breaking an axle and then it'll just sit there. And it'll be like, if you were doing something dumb, I can tell. And that's where it broke. So we don't know. We'll catch help from Mojo. Kind of wishes they got a tack. Seems like she's really barking, but it still kind of floats pretty good. It says we're doing 65. Could definitely benefit from an overdrive if you were going to do a lot of highway drive. Maybe that's what we should do is hook a trailer up to this thing. See how she tows. Got that fancy hitch we need to try out. I think it's going to take some getting used to. She needs, she needs some 
limber it up. Kind of like the old vice. If anybody knows what kind of vice that is, what brand? Let us know. Comment down below. I couldn't see a name on it. Yeah, first gear in these things. Look at that! It's not even steaming or smoking or hissing or whizzing or leaking. Okay, there's uh, something maybe leaking back there. Is that oil? What the valve cover gasket leaking? Oh yeah, looks like she's trickling down the back of the valve cover. Or is it our favorite spot, the rear main seal? It is dead in the center of the pickup. Perfect. Good way to take out that clutch that works surprisingly well. You want to go ahead and pop a new two-piece rear main seal in for us quick? You can use the lift. Oh, you just want to go for rides? Of course. Well, I guess a couple leaks are to be expected after sitting for 06 to 2022, 20, 16 years. You know, you're going to have that. Anything that's rubber, seals, tires, you know, your seals and your brake system, door seals, window seals, all that stuff. Just dries up over time, especially when it's outside. And especially if you're in the south where you get a lot of sun and whatnot. So just expect it. Stuff gets brittle. You gotta keep you gotta keep your rubber lubed and limbered up. Limbered? I don't know. I'm a crack a sandwich. I think we're gonna we're gonna call her there tonight for tonight with the old buckets truck. What are we gonna go with tonight? You know, you can't go wrong with an iconic blonde. You can never go wrong with a blonde, but iconic blondes from Rhombus Guys, that's a solid choice, right? They've been a pretty good beer sponsor. We better crack one of them. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Ah, that's the spot. You should go find a white left front square body fender, 81 to 87, like I found that one for the ramp truck that we haven't got on there yet. That'd be great. Really clean that rig up. You gonna go check one out? Cool, you're a good kid. Be back by supper. All right, I'm gonna enjoy a sandwich and enjoy our fruits of our labor and clean up the shop. Figure out what we're gonna do next. <sighs> Make a list of parts we should probably order for that thing. If you really want it though, check out the description down below. And uh, we'll put a price and availability if we still have it. Hit us up with an email, mortsgearpair at gmail.com. Also, Check out the merch. There's a link down below. Support Duff's treat habit and my sandwich habit and everything else we're trying to support around here. I'm trying to keep this new shop so we don't lose it. If you want to know more about said new shop, check out our other channel. More Mortsky Repair. That was the best name we could come up with. You guys have been killing it going over there and leaving comments, liking, sharing, subscribing. 
video's been doing great. So I've been trying to do a video every week, I'm trying to do Friday at six o'clock. We do Mondays at eight on the main channel, Fridays at 6 p.m. on the second channel, just kind of split things up for the about, you know, 20% of you that watch the main channel that watch the other channel, break your week up. So I appreciate every one of you folks that watches this channel, but especially the people who watch both channels, you guys and gals are the best. I don't know what we got going on this week. Maybe Iola swap meet, maybe some auction sale finds, Astro van stuff's coming down the pipeline, some dent side Ford stuff, mountain tires, expedition stuff, all kinds of crazy shenanigans. All right, I'm gonna quit rambling, figure out what we're gonna, what we're gonna do next. I don't know. I haven't determined if we're gonna wrap this video yet. It just seems way too easy. It's too early in the week to start another project. Maybe we should just slam that thing on the ground. What do you think? Lower it, bag it, bag service truck. That'd be pretty swanky. All right, sandwiches are getting me. Good crazy ideas. See you guys in a couple seconds. Well, Mojo rebuilt the wheel cylinder on the, on the big dually, so we're ready to go there. Now we just gotta get a fender to fill a hole. How do you, how do you like my body work I did on that fender? <laughs> Real good? Yeah. You didn't, you, haven't, you looked at this. You, I know you admired it all morning. Just put a little Bondo in there, good to go, huh? <laughs> you glad you didn't pay for it, right? Hey. All right, I mean, it looks like a fender again. She's pretty hailed out, especially right in there. But it's gonna fill a hole. I'm not gonna weld these all shut and smooth them down. I did look on Rock Auto. Fenders are only 75 bucks. It's just 350 bucks to ship it. Looks like you can get a fender for 200 bucks shipped on eBay. So we're not gonna spend any time mudding and seam sealing and doing all that stuff. So this is more or less just to show you guys what you can do and what I can't do. But front came out pretty good. Uh, there was already some filler in here from a previous injury. We got her pretty, pretty good. We could have spent a little time in the planishing hammer and smoothed that out a bit. This front maybe is a little bit far out, but that actually came out pretty good. Like I said, back here, this stuff is just wasted. So I'm not even gonna paint this. I'm gonna wear this like a like a badge of honor until we find a, a better fender. So if anybody's got a decent 81 to 87 GM left front fender, hit us up, mortsgearpair at gmail.com. You can tell the 81 87 has got the horizontal. It also fits 89 to 91 crew cabs and suburbans. It's got the horizontal marker light. The 73 to 80s are vertical. Tech tip of the day. How do I identify fenders for square body GMs? They're the same between GM and Chevy or GMC and Chevrolet, I do believe. All right, let's get this thing whammied on there so we can get the front bumper on and carry on with our lives.
don't know about you kids, but I don't think that thing looks half bad. I mean, it's better than it was. And if we just quick foo-foo canned it with some flat white, I don't think that'd be terrible. Oh, hey, look at you. Just hanging out in there, ready to go for a rip. Look at that gap. That's like paint stick good. She's uh, a little wide up here though. I don't know what you can do there because it's sucked up tight to the rad support. So you can't really shim that in or out. Should be like this side. Anywho, let's see if we can get a bumper on it. Find a marker light and whatnot, but yeah. It's a heck of a lot better than it was. What do you think? Comment down below about my hackery body skills. There should be a disclaimer. Do not try this at home. Although I've seen vehicles that have had jobs like that and then they mud over it. Yeah, don't be that guy or girl. All right, let's get a bumper on this thing. I think we're gonna have to take this bracket off because see how this is about, I don't know, two inches out from that balance. And this side is about four inches out. I think that bracket got bent when that bumper got bent. Imagine that. So let's get that off there. Cause we got extra brackets cause my bumper and Chin's bumper both had brackets and I know his wasn't whammied up. So his should be good. And to be honest, I don't even think we need that outside bracket for what we're gonna do. Let's just get it off there. How about that? Sound good to you? Well, it's a chrome bumper. He's a little, oh, oh, we'll run this side. But I like chrome bumpers better than painted bumpers, even on this stripper model pickup. It's got a hooey in the corner and whatever. It ain't that great, but it's better than the one we had. And I think if we do find a fender, we'll take this one of chins and we'll get it blasted and painted and we'll sneak that one back on there. But that thing is just, the paint is in such bad shape. This kind of matches the character and it's all whammied up in this corner, so it kind of matches that. I fender a little bit. Better than nothing. And plus it was a bunch of scrap iron we had laying around. Now let's put the icing on the cake. Oh, I say cake and you come running. Let's see if we can't put some 194 bulbs in those chicken chasers. Get them working. You want to hit the switch? That'd be great. Oh, you're a good pupper duff. Now, that was just the bulb. Lucky. Bad bulb, probably. There we go. Turn the lenses on. Ready to rock, and duffers. Alrighty. Way good. What do you think? You should come out here and check them out. Pretty freaking awesome. Let's do a light check. Those two marker lights are working. Oh, we need to find one for that. I think I got one stashed away though. How about back here? Oh, freaking both tail lights are working. License plate lights ain't working though. Son of a biscuit. So we got a couple lights to fix. How about the marker light on the front over here? Well, that's working. Sweet. There, now she'll have a fighting chance at working. Got some 10 year old white Walmart paint. Oh yeah, nobody's ever gonna know. They're never gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. Just blend it all in. We should get something so we don't get overspray on the door. You know, am I gonna? No. Should we? Yes. You definitely wanna get all the old paint off and prime it first. That's not something we do here at Mortski's. Body by Mortski. Oh yeah, real good. I'd love to say that we do customer work, but you know, we're just so busy doing all of our own stuff here that we uh, don't have time for them paying jobs. That's the best part about a whole project, huffing paint. This uh, here Walmart paint 
is the worst covering stuff ever. I mean, it doesn't even hardly fill in the gaps or the low spots. That's what that high build primer is for, I guess. Once we put that emblem on there, things gonna be great. That was really silly of me to put that marker light on before we did this, wasn't it? Yeah. Man, we do good work, Duff. Ship boost, an overhaul is gonna be calling us. We're gonna be like, I know you're gonna lose the shot. We got a job for you. Sorry, Chip. Just can't do it. Now all the paint's still tacky, you want to put your emblem back on. You want to put it in the wrong spot a couple times and smear that paint around. <sighs> this thing's so good. Look at that. You can hardly see where we seamed it together. Only a trained eye of a professional, like that eagle eye down in Pot County, could ever see that. So good. Duff, take a step back. Come check this out. It's like if you move the camera like real fast, you can't even hardly tell. Look at that thing. I mean, if that thing was going by at like 20 mile an hour, you wouldn't, you would never know that she was all reworked by Duff's body shop. Anyway, I guess the compressor is going to kick on, so we're going to go crack a sandwich. And I think we're going to wrap this video. Oh, yeah. Some of Wisconsin's finest. That's the good stuff. All right, be back in a second. Well, boys and girls, thank you much for watching. I think we're gonna wrap her right there on the 1981 Chevrolet C30 Dually service truck. I think we're gonna affectionately name Buckets. This thing had been sitting for 16 years, drug it out of the weeds, put some air in some tires, tube to tire, Reseal the wheel cylinder, put a few plug wires on it, put a battery in it, clean out a fuel tank, threw some new fuel hoses on it. Old Chevys, they just like to live. That was so easy that we had to go ahead and do some body work because you know how good we are at body work. So we reworked the fender, stuck a uh, different chrome bumper on it, put some marker lights on it. I mean, even most of the lights are even working for Christ's sake. We cleaned her up. And now, we're going to use it a bit, unless somebody else wants to own this thing. So if you want to own this thing, check the video description. It's right down here. We'll put a price and availability and how to get it all, a hold of us, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. Check out other videos. Check out our merch. Link down below. If you want to purchase some of that, that'd be great. Support our sandwich habit, because it's hot out. We need a lot of sandwiches to keep us fueled up in this hot weather. Check out the other videos, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the other channels that we mentioned earlier. Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Fitzy's, we'll give him a shout out. Fitzy's Fabrication, check him out. He's out in that side of Canada. What's it called? It's not that way, it's that way. New Newfoundland, he's a Newfie. Go check him out. He does lots of cool body work on the cheap. Good body work, not Mortsky body work. Anyway, we're going to go on to the next one. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun, hack body work. It's fun. And tell people see it and they're like, what happened to your fender? And you're like, you just don't worry about what happened to my fender. What do you think, Duff? Should you clean up the shop, start on the next one? Yeah. Oh, you want to go for a ride first? Not tonight. We've been sandwiching.